This year, Council on Aging celebrates its 40th anniversary. At 40, we're just a youngster, or so our clients would say. But from small beginnings, we've grown to become one of the largest nonprofits in our region. And as the population ages, our services are more vital than ever. It's important to recognize the context of the Older Americans Act when it was passed in 1965, in that as late as, as the 19, early 1960s, we had almost 40% of the older population that was living in poverty. And with poverty comes lots of other social needs, including uh, advocacy for uh, housing, for food, uh, for legal rights, and the Older Americans Act really tried to address all of those issues um, with, with comprehensive legislation. The Older Americans Act did raise awareness, but in the view of our founders, seniors in our area wanted an organization that could get them the funding and services they needed. In 1971, Council on Aging became official. We incorporated as a nonprofit organization. Three years later, the state of Ohio designated us to be the Area Agency on Aging for five counties, Butler, Claremont, Clinton, Hamilton, and Warren. One of our key duties was to serve as a central, unbiased source of answers on aging. We opened an information and referral telephone line that has since become our Aging and Disability Resources Center. We get calls that range from how do I get extra help with prescription drugs to I'm homeless, where do I call for shelter, to um, I want to stay in my own home, what kind of help can you give me? So I listen and then um, determine based on the level of care that they need or their, their loved one needs or a friend needs. I tell them, let's figure out what the, what the needs are. And our job is to try to pr provide some clarification, some comfort. But in our early days, we focused on administering Older Americans Act funds for services that helped older adults stay healthy, active, and connected to their communities. The senior centers really were there to enrich the lives of older adults in the community. Uh, folks could come to the center to socialize, exercise programs, education programs, uh, places to go uh, and see and be with friends. But in a, in a way, the senior centers really gave birth to the in-home community-based network uh, with Meals on Wheels going out of the senior centers, uh, transportation beginning to be provided to get folks to the doctor, uh, and even some of the centers getting involved in home care services. The late 1980s brought Passport, Ohio's in-home care waiver program. For the first time, Ohio seniors and taxpayers had a Medicaid-funded alternative to nursing homes. And as we took over administration of Passport for our region, we set out on a new direction. What Passport did was allow older people to be able to get a whole array of in-home services uh, that they would have normally gotten in a nursing home in their own homes. Uh, Passport has grown dramatically uh, since that early program. The Cincinnati area um, through the COA is a, is a large provider of in-home services and uh, Passport on any given day probably serves more than 3,000 people. Despite its success, Passport is limited. It's only for those with low incomes. That led to the creation of local tax levies to bring in-home services to more people. Claremont County already had one. Council on Aging led the effort that started the Hamilton County Elderly Services Program. Levies followed in Butler, Clinton, and Warren counties. I was proud to be a part of the Hamilton County Elderly Services Program. I mean, I was part of the startup, so that was in and of itself very rewarding. But to go out there and to meet the people and put the services in place and go back on return visits, to hear them say how helpful these services were for them, it was great. Because before, there were no other options for them in the community. If they didn't meet the waiver program, the passport program, they did not have services available to them. So this allowed them to stay in their home, hopefully longer. Maybe prevented a fall because somebody carried in groceries or took laundry down steps. It was easy things to do, the services, but it meant a lot for them. Caregivers, both professional home health aides and family loved ones, are the hearts and hands that bring our programs to life. Uh, if, if Council on Aging hadn't helped me, I, I wouldn't have been able to take care of her. I wouldn't have my mother. 
I love him and he loves me. We may be old, but we still love each other. And that's what we plan on doing. And that's why, you know, you need, you need money, you need help to do that. And thank God for the Council on Aging that they have sent me some help. One very important role for an area agency on aging is advocacy. We are a voice for many who may be forgotten and who can't always speak for themselves. From our statewide Fair Care Ohio advocacy campaign, to meetings with elected officials, to visits by legislators to our clients' homes, and activities by our advocacy volunteers, we refuse to be content with the status quo. Aging is a big deal here in Ohio, and the aging of, of Ohio is, is growing. The population over age 60 is the fastest growing segment of our population. Council on Aging is addressing the growing population in many new and exciting ways. We have a new nursing home and diversion transition department where we are placing staff in the hospitals to help older adults um, transition their care from the hospital setting back home or into a nursing facility for rehabilitation care and not be inappropriately rehospitalized and to make sure that the, the senior understands all of the options that are available to them. For everyone in the field of aging, these are exciting and challenging times. At 40 years, we've hit a milestone as we continue to move ahead. So happy anniversary, COA. Happy 40th anniversary, COA. Happy anniversary, COA. Happy 40th anniversary, Council on Aging. Happy anniversary, Council on Aging.